Die Geschichte der Menschheit ist eine Geschichte von Technik und alles andere ist Kommentar. Willem Flusser My name is Liad Greiver. I'm a cross-disciplinary painter and a media artist uh, based in Berlin. I'm originally from Israel and I studied classical uh, painting and printmaking in the Hochschule für Grafik und Buchkunst in Leipzig, or the Art Academy of Leipzig. My uh, work and focus moved for more traditional approaches to the creation of imagery and painting into the use of robotics. Um, in the painterly process. This is uh, where I become a kind of a co-developer on the E. David painting robot project based in the University of Constance. This is kind of a cross-disciplinary platform where uh, together with computer um, engineering we are looking into different ways of how one can use current technology, robotics, and um, computer-generated uh, like digital imagery uh, into bring novel creation or understanding of art making and painting in our contemporary era. I believe that uh, the tools that we are using are actually influencing the way we think and how we create, how we articulate ourselves, and as well how we as a society um, communicate different values of aesthetic. Like aesthetic is not only a representative of something that we consider to be beautiful or ugly. It actually inherits to what it represents, how it's structured, reflect on our cultural values, our way of thinking. And I'm, as I mentioned, grew up in the Middle East, so I'm coming actually from an Iraqi family, and I always grew up thinking on the European. Uh, way of art is the kind of high level of art and this is what brought me as well into Germany and I was living for some time as well in the States and in Italy really investigating classical Western art and went specifically to um, the Art Academy of Leipzig because it's known for teaching you the craftsmanship of making not only painting but as well the different kind of techniques of printmaking. And I saw how interacting with different kind of techniques like painting techniques or printmaking technique made my way of thinking about the image making about painting to to always shifted and, and goes around so when i actually graduate and i looked around on the work that i i have done in the past year it made me really think of what is using those kind of tools or those kind of works has actually anything to do with, not only with my own personal biography but it was the contemporary me the person who lives today who inherit or consume uh, most of the visual imagery today is from either from my phone or from the computer or printed, namely pixels. Information is being transmitted and flows from different kind of origin, a bit out of context. Um, and I started thinking, how can I integrate this uh, other practice, the working with visuals, with computer, with digital imagery, into this very timely based, process based work of painting. And that was kind of the point where I started in investigating into different kind of methods of making paintings. How can I integrate computer and not only as a printing, namely like bringing a finished object out to the world, but actually the process based um, into this entire way of, th of thought of how one creates work of art and the, the contents of it. And, that's kind of where I shifted uh, into the work with robotics. Today there is this new kind of a hype or talk about artificial intelligence and the fear that it's going to overcome or overtake um, the human role in many kind of uh, avenues or aspects, which is kind of done in more I industrial ways. And I think it's kind of a, a lot of romanticism we have about the machine and maybe not really understanding or thinking what it means to work creatively, uh, us as people, the, the, what we need in order to work creatively, what we bring into an artwork in order for it to actually interact with other people. Machine do not work like that. Machine has usually a target to work for. Robots uh, made for the industry to work for a very precise, like 
precise kind of a, a job. And I really don't believe that it's, it's any risk for us, for us to be replaced by a machine. I think it's going to be a very sad moment for humanity if we are happy about something that is generically made by a machine. I do ever think that the interaction with those machines, like if uh, one take this very precise targeted uh, operation of a robot, for example, and put it together with the more intuitive work of, of an artist and let those two different kind of works or, or worlds to interact with each other and work together, we can kind of come to very surprising elements. Uh, for example, when I'm working with the machine, with the robot, the machine does not understand when a paint uh, drip or something, or the, the, the brush is a bit deformed. It's something that I, with my senses directly, will try to correct or uh, reform. But the fact that the machine is actually going blindly with things brings us to some kind of a happy accident situations uh, that allows me to break free from a lot of preconditions and rules that are being taught in the art academy or from the art milieu of right or wrong and integrate those kind of the, the, the machine-based language into the more artistic and intuitive human way of language. And I think this is where the fun part actually begins. One of the interesting parts with working with uh, computational power and with robotics in the artistic creation is that it's kind of allowing us to go beyond the human abilities. It means that uh, using computer we can, for example, save information, we can repeat it, uh, we can shuffle it, we can manipulate it, we can read variation. Uh, of the same kind of an element. For example, um, in my work, it, I'm, I'm focusing a lot on the brush strokes, on the physical act of making a line, which is when one think on, on painting, it's the, the base of, of the structure of everything. This is where the, the signature of an artist is. However, we, I will never be able to repeat exactly the same movement. Machine can. I can save this information, I can reorganize that and it will bring it into kind of a new uh, surprising aesthetics. On the other hand, when one think of computational vision and how we analyze visual information, we're kind of moving a bit from the classical uh, 20th century discourse about the Bildsprache into visual data. Building visual information is based on computer language, namely it's based on statistics, on patterns, of recognizing those patterns or extracting them and using them again. So there is some kind of a level that we kind of uh, reach or conquered by integrating uh, computational power into artistic creation. Because the machine does not understand, we understand gestalt, we understand uh, body of things, like if I'm thinking of um, an area, a plot of paint, I see an entire area, like a rectangle, or just like an unform, a form of, of color. A machine will see tons of pixels. This new access that we have to technology today is allowing us to kind of reinvent ourselves and kind of reinvent hierarchy in the art world, in the aesthetics. And I think this is, was for me, for example, a, a point of liberation from condition of making art. Growing up in the Middle East, coming to Europe, learning embedded protocols of how one should make art, considering or being set by the art academy, kind of taught me how to control my body or what to expect or how to create certain things that considered to be uh, right and, be or, and beautiful. And suddenly when I actually need to reverse the entire process because I need to code it into the machine, I need to think what is beautiful, namely, yes, what is like into bi binary um, values. So yes, no, good, bad. I kind of free assess those entire structures and make me rethink what is the right thing for me to do or what maybe I can borrow right now information from different places so I can actually have the place to stop and to use those tools to kind of do self-reflection on my own tendencies but as well on a social level uh, of tendency of what is right or wrong, what is beautiful versus ugly. How do I want to use it to be very accurate about that 
And I think this is a place where we need to be very aware of how we're using it because right now, for example, if one look at the use of, uh, of GAN uh, for creation of, uh, of imagery and different level of artificial intelligence, um, the unfortunate part is that it goes to the other direction. We kind of creating more variation already existing information instead of breaking it. So it's always the question of how can we manipulate the work to actually challenge our precondition of thinking and creating uh, new works today. Because this technology is very new and it allows us or it gives us a place to play, there is no one who, there is no, the old masters that we need to look and they tell us, okay, this is how it's the right way to do things. So this is how the tradition told us that things need to be done. We are facing now a place where everything is just out there for us. We, are, have, we have an access to so much data, information, working tools. We can exchange with other people. We can do so much with that. And I think if we're wise enough and we understand the power that we have, um, we can use it as a way to break old structure or hierarchy about um, how the art world works, uh, what considered to be an artwork, um, bring a lot of time people that are officially not artists, but as, as scientists, as collaborators into this kind of a world. And we, have, we really have an opportunity here to recreate uh, a new language of, of aesthetics and artistic disc discourse. In my work, I'm always interested in the concept of perception. It means things that we see and how can we take information from nature and translate it or reintroduce it in artistic, through artistic tools into the viewer. So from the beginning until today, I always worked with the, from the concept of working from observation from nature. And actually starting working together with robotic-based painting, it allowed me to actually take um, from the natural science a lot of uh, concepts or matter of work of actually using uh, mathematic-based um, visualization of different kind of um, natural effects. And I found it kind of interesting how it goes together with a uh, concept of uh, mimetic geometries, namely how the, in certain kind of practices, there was a use of geometry to, as a mimetic tool to represent nature. I found it very interesting because then we're thinking of structure, we're thinking maybe on meditation of the artist creating those rep repetitive patterns um, taken from nature. And so it's something that I kind of done while I was uh, studying and learning uh, Japanese calligraphy many years ago, is really thinking of how the almost meditation or repetitive work of understanding, that means like how my body, the rhythm of my body become in line with some kind of a natural um, understanding of a representation of a tree, for example. So suddenly I found kind of there is a loop happening right now where kind of folks art or very traditional old uh, way of practicing art is coming together from the computer and the scientific elements of representation or creating of images. And they create kind of a new world of, or a new place for creation, which is opposed to the classical uh, Western understanding of the artist as the individualist, as genius, that everything needs to be signed by this uh, person who done that. So suddenly we're putting the person or the, the, the individual aside and we start thinking of more holistic understanding of creation of uh, visual imagery. We are living today in a time where there is so much information out there. It's impossible to be this Renaissance man anymore. You can maybe over the surface know a bit of this, a bit of that, but you actually in order to understand a complex architecture of code or art, you need to immerse yourself in that. And I think the only way to actually achieve a higher level um, of work or to come into a novel understanding of creation is through exchange. It means that the, behind every one of my work is always a team of people working. It's not only me, it's the live um, talks that I have in the lab with a computer scientist or people from biology 
or people from uh, neuroscientists that are uh, actually thinking of how we perceive or understand things or cultural and um, social understanding of the use and the revolution of, of, that, of the digital and technological revolution it has on, on our society. So I do believe that right now there is the key uh, element of my work is collaboration. Is already think how and what can I learn from others? What can I offer as well as in return? And how can we work together in order to beneficially um, develop both of the researchers as well to create kind of a new body of work that, that reflect this complexity that we have today. Mm -hmm.